Well, today I'm going to make a custom made walking stick. And this is no ordinary walking stick. This walking stick is made to be a tool, just like this little printout, this uh, printout with the Boy Scout sketchbook. Um, you know, it's, it's, Walking staves are not supposed to be just for good looks and walking around. They're supposed to actually mean something and and have a tool that uh, you can you can uh, carry with you and have all the supplies that you need for a day adventure. So we're going to make one of those. And what you need is uh, this is a three quarter inch um, cap made of copper. You can get that at uh, Home Depot. And uh, that'll run you, oh, yeah, I think they're about $1.38 for that. Um, these are uh, some tacks that you can get at Michael's. Uh, they are brass, and uh, those are tacks that, uh, I think these are about 5 bucks. There's quite a few tacks in there. You could do several staffs. Uh, the staff itself, I also got at Home Depot, and it was uh, just under uh, five bucks. I think it was four dollars and twenty cents. And then I have a hook, and uh, the hook I believe was somewhere around. Um, it was under a buck. I think it was eighty-four cents. So um, that and about thirty feet of five-fifty cord, um, a drill with an appropriate size drill bit. And I'm going to use a table saw today because I want to make mine a little bit more custom um, and have a hidden pocket inside the staff, stave rather, so that I can put uh, fishing gear and a couple of band-aids. You'll also need some five minute epoxy and these are little itty bitty uh, I think they're 16th inch. Um, I'm going to pre-drill the holes that, that these go into because I don't want to bust the wood and I don't want to mess these up. I want to be able to just to almost press these in. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do the most important thing first, cut first. I've measured uh, and this, this uh, stave here, which is uh, basically it's just a rake. Uh, pole. Um, it is a one and an eighth inch uh, in diameter. So what I did here is I, I measured one and uh, correction a uh, um, nine sixteenths on the blade and put nine sixteenths right in the center. See if I can get that close in there to you. 9 16 right in the center of that that uh, kerf of the blade and I'll just go ahead and cut through on one side and then finish up maybe on the other or just cut through one side and then just use a saw on the other to, to get it the, the rest of the way. So what I'm going to do is measure at the very top down and it looks like it starts at the 12 inch mark goes all the way down to about 23 okay so that's about 10 11 inches of of uh, wrapping so I want to go about in the center of that to make the cut on the table saw all right so if I do it about in the middle that's about uh, between 12 and 23 so we're talking about 17 inches so about the center of the blade is where 17 inches needs to be okay tiny little mark right there 
That's going to be in the middle. And I guess it would help if I had power. All right, let's try this one more time. Okay, it's over where it's supposed to be. Shouldn't have to say this, but it used extreme caution doing that. That's not exactly what the table saw was meant for. So if you're going to make that cut, use extreme caution. All right, now that the uh, probably stupidest part, <laughs> craziest part, most dangerous part is completed. Um, I'm just going to finish this off with the jigsaw. Careful of any slivers in here, but that ought to be good enough to uh, put band-aids and uh, whatever else that I want in there. I'm going to leave this just a little bit bigger so that I can drill a hole through this part, or, or actually this part, and then that will be the start of where I start the wrap, so I'll have something to hold on to. So I took this on the belt sander here. You could do this by hand too. And I just finished up this edge, both sides, just so that there's not a whole lot of slivers and stuff because uh, doing a rip saw, it will leave some slivers. And now I can easily put the band-aids and fishing hooks and also some fishing line inside there. And then I'm going to seal up both sides with some uh, clear uh, packing tape. So this brings us to the siding portion. Um, you want to drill a hole uh, straight down on this side and then at a 90 degree on this side and that is for siding along the trail. You actually put the pole down, look through it with your eye, you can sight down the trail and then you'll know if you leave the pole in place if you sight down the other way that you know that you're exactly 90 degrees um, and you can make a 90 degree corner um, just using your stave. Uh, but I may have to make sure that I drill these. Uh, I want to make sure that this is at the correct depth so I don't actually drill into this or it won't interfere. Um, this is about uh, an inch and a quarter. So I need to make sure that I'm going to go down at least to two inches which is right there in the R of the Brazil mark. And that's very important that the second drill hole is exactly 90 degrees off into here. Otherwise, the stave is not going to be uh, very useful for making that corner with these, uh, these homemade peep sights. Being very careful. Be very careful to go right down the center of that. And I'm going to need to be very careful to be right directly level and go through this side, going through the same hole.
All right, I'm going to drill a hole right up here, and that's where the end of the 550 cord will go so that it won't it won't actually slip and slide. It's actually going to terminate right here with a knot. So I need to drill a little hole to make that happen. Actually, probably need to measure here first. 12, right, so it needs to be right there. It's a good thing that I measured. Okay. Because this is where the wrap should start. Wood is a little slick. It's hard to get this thing started perfectly. be the hole for the 550 cord and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna countersink one side because I'm, I'm just gonna tie a knot in the very end of that 550 cord so I'm gonna put a little bit of a countersink to it the use of this countersink and that way the knot is basically inside the wood and it's not sticking out There we go. And that should hide the knot real well where it where it terminates. All right. I'm going to pre-drill this hole here so that the hook can go straight in. Once again, it's kind of slick wood, so it's hard to get it started. You can actually start this with a smaller drill bit. Don't drill yourself in the hand. So it only has to go in. About that far is good enough. That's about an inch and a quarter. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. What I'm gonna do is uh, put a little WD-40 in here and uh, that will actually prevent any, any uh, mo if moisture gets in here, it'll prevent it from getting in and doing a number on the wood. And just makes the this go in a little bit easier as well. If it gets too hard to put in, you might need to get a screwdriver and uh, put it inside this to get it to go a little bit further. It looks like it's going pretty easily by hand, so I'm not going to have to use that. And I am right at the end. That's looking good. All right, now it's time to mix up some five minute epoxy. And I'm gonna mix it directly into the three quarter inch cap. These are nice because it gives an equal amount of both ingredients so that it is a good, of course, if you get it on backwards, it could glue the tip to it, but, um, so I have a donor stick and I'm just going to mix it up inside here. No huge rush because you got five minutes. But you want to make sure that it's good and mixed so that it dries good and hard. And you could even slather it up the edges too because, well, this is going to be the bottom, the foot of the stab to help protect it from 
bit of terrain, rocks, whatever. That just goes right on there like that. And I'll tip it up the other way so it doesn't start leaking out. There we go. We'll just let that dry and that should be good to go. All right, so I got a bunch of band-aids and got some fishing hooks. So this is what I want to do with the fishing hook. Just want to embed them in a piece of duct tape. Not only to help keep them keep them nice uh, uh, without rust and whatever, but also to so that they don't fall out and fall out all over the place. And it does help you keep you safe <laughs> from getting stabbed. So that will go inside. And then I have uh, some band-aids here. That will also go inside the stave. And I'm going to uh, get some fishing line off of here. Probably about 30 feet or so. That ought to go in there just fine as well. And what I've decided to do is to make sure that these are nice and sealed up um, with a coat of, of uh, clear. It's just Rust-Oleum, clear gloss. And that's just to make sure that uh, nothing happens to this wood. When I put the tape on there, it's all going to be sealed up anyway. But I just, it's part of my OCD, I guess. And we'll just let that dry, stick the parts in there, and then seal it up with the Packers tape. Alright, now that the paint is thoroughly dried, there's some more stuff on this tape, so we'll just get rid of that end. A nice fresh piece of tape coming out. And I'm just going to make sure that the back side is sealed up nice. nice and sealed so now I can start stuffing all of the ingredients in here all right I trimmed these uh, fishing hooks so two can fit in here maybe I'll stick them up at the top Really tight fit. And it looks like I might be able to fit at least four band-aids in here. But if I get four band-aids in, then I'm not going to be able to get the fishing line in. And what I might have to do with the fishing line is just wrap it around the pole, which uh, that might not be a bad idea. That way I can get more band-aids in. And it'll keep the fishing line from getting too mangled up inside there. Alright, now that everything is sealed up inside, 
and the fishing line is on. get my brother I guess he doesn't want to text me back so he gets whatever color that I want for him he said uh, something visible but then he says eh, I might change my mind so well I guess he's gonna get some 550 cord that is army green So that's a small hole and let's see if I got it small enough to go through yes I did pokes through the other side now just like I had planned tie a very very short ended knot right at the end of that weld and that'll just pop right into place there and you could hardly even see it because I've countersunk this hole and now I gotta do just uh, wrap it about 30 feet should come on about down to here I ended up just drilling another hole at the very end and just popping it in through there. And that way this whole thing just stays really, really monster tight when I when I tighten it up. Rather than just having a loose knot down here that can just, you know, rotate and slide around this pole and get loose over time. I decided just to terminate it this way, opposite direction of this way. So so this this knot is on that side. And this knot is on the other. Looks pretty good though. I drilled a pilot hole with my 16th inch um, drill bit. Uh, one small issue though. These things do not... I mean it's, it's, a, it's a perfect fit, but I want it to, you know, stay. <laughs> I don't want all these things to start falling out, so... I'm gonna to have to come up with a solution for that. Um, one that you can, you know, get the thing in and out without it uh, being permanent. I think I'm gonna do a little test. I just put a little bit of uh, wood glue. Um, so I'm just gonna put uh, about that much. Put it in the hole. And I'll wait a little bit to see if that uh, is stable enough to stay into place. Well, I got all excited and got a little ahead of my videoing. Um, so I'm just taking the tack, putting it in just a little tiny bit of glue, and sticking it down in the hole. And if it doesn't go down all the way, you just take a non-marring hammer and just tap it. I mean, <laughs> this is a sludge. You don't want to sludge the heck out of it, but uh, just tap it. It'll be good enough. So each one of these is located at the inch mark. And these, um, these double as a, an emergency nail. And of course they're very nice, they're decorative. Um, but they're functional. And that is the whole point get something functional so if you're in a stream going through a stream and you really don't know how high the the water is or um, 
or the depth of it is rather you can stick your stave in there and you can you can uh, at least measure with your stave because there's going to be if this is 12 inches one foot then the second one up is is two feet etc you can at least uh, gauge the uh, water depth before you try to cross a stream looks like we're going to need to pop that one down just a little bit with that uh, non-marring hammer all right well i added an embellishment this is a a turk heads knot and it's just so that you can put your hand in here and and uh, get a little uh, extra support with your hand and I just left the end long so that he can make it as long as he wants to or as short this is for my brother uh, he's a pretty big youtuber um, not massively big but uh, somewhat famous I guess, but he has more subscribers than I do. Anyway, happy birthday, Bob. Hope you get a lot of uh, walks out of this.